Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim from Pitsco Education. Today's RoboBench, I wanna cover a little bit more in depth the Tetrix RC motor controller. This is for the DC 12 volt motors that go with the Mac system. In other words, Torknado motors, 12 volt battery, Max. That's what we're talking about here. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the, the box itself. It's like the other control elements. In other words, it's part of the control family of the Tetrix ecosystem. Clear polycarbonate case mounted and built specifically to mount to the Tetrix elements. The whole pattern is gonna match all of the, the uh, max channel hole panners. So it's gonna be easy to bolt up to your robot. Anderson power pole connectors, plug and play, easy red to red, black to black, easy intuitive to use, whether it be the battery connection or the motor connections. It has a couple of features that we will talk a little bit more about um, in a minute, but it, just to briefly call them out, we have a mode button that allows you to switch between single stick and mixed mode. We'll explain what that means. Uh, but other than that, I think we're ready to go ahead and put it on a robot and actually show you how it works. Let's go ahead and look how it actually goes on a robot. Let's walk through the connections and see what we've got. So I'm gonna move this to the side uh, for now. Uh, and let's look actually at our robot. And I'm gonna hold this up so we can see the box clearly. Let's start with our uh, connections to our motors. Again, we have a Anderson power pole, very intuitive. It's red to red, black to black uh, for both uh, motors. And again, going directly from the cable coming from the motors directly into my box. Uh, the only thing you'll have to decide is uh, what is the front and back of your robot in order to, to be able to decide which input you're going to use on your box. You've got a motor one and a motor two, and obviously those are going to coincide with your motors. Uh, the next thing that we have is our, our connections to our receiver. Again, these cables, these three pin cables come with our box, and there are two inputs on my box that are going to go into... Uh, two of the four possible inputs on my wireless receiver. Now let's go ahead and start with our controller as a way to explain that because there are four possible channels on our receiver that match the four axes of the joysticks. In other words, I have a vertical axis on this side, that's one channel, vertical axis on this, that's another, and then I've got a horizontal on both sides, that's the third and fourth uh, channels. Now. How those channels are numbered, uh, again, is in your resources that's available uh, on the product pages. But uh, just briefly, uh, we have two and three that are our vertical channels, and we have one and four that are ho our horizontal channels. Again, that's going to impact how uh, we plug that in. So let's go ahead and, and turn this on, because this is going to lead us into our discussion about tank uh, drive versus mixed mode or single stick. So right now, I have my receivers uh, plugged into channels two and three, which is going to match my vertical axes. Let me look at that box again, just so you'll, I want to point this out. Um, like all of our Tetrace controllers, when I power that on, let me do that again so we actually can see that. When I power it on, I have a blue uh, power light that comes on in our box, showing clearly through the carb uh, polycarbonate case that allows us to know we've got power to our box. We had a flashing yellow light that, that it was checking the mode condition. Uh, and then that has now gone out um, because I'm not in my mixed mode. Um, and then I also have a flashing light on my wireless receiver red that lets me know I've got power coming through these input channels from my box. I do not need to have a separate battery on my wireless receiver because it's getting power through these. So that's important to know. When I go ahead and power on my controller, I get a solid green light here, and uh, as you can see, it's a solid red light here that shows I'm paired up. So I'm gonna point this this direction just to show you briefly how that works. So if I've got it in a tank drive, when I move both sticks forward, my robot should drive uh, forward, uh, pull them back, it should go ahead and back up. And I'm gonna stop and put this on a, a, a an actual little stand that I made here so that we can move this back and forth and actually not have my robot run off the table. But again, I'm gonna do that again. If I, if I move my sticks forward, the wheels are moving. And in this case, I have it set up in a rear wheel. So this is the, my rear of the robot, this is my front. So then I move both of them forward. The robot's gonna move this direction. If I pull them back, it's gonna move in that direction. This is a tank style drive. Now, if I put this into a mixed mode, 
All I have to do, I press my little button right up here. I get my yellow light, shows me I'm in mixed mode. Now I can move my channels on the, my receiver to coincide and put them on a single stick. So I'm gonna take my input one, and I'm gonna move this up to channel four. And once I do that, now I should have everything on one side so that as I move my uh, joystick vertically, mixes, it mixes the, the power between the two motors. And that's the secret of a mixed mode. Typically, if I didn't put it in mixed mode, to get both motors to go in the same direction at the same speed, I'd have to hold my joystick at an angle, which is very inconvenient. So this is about uh, making it easy for the user to actually use, so that when I think about going forward, all I have to do is push my joystick forward. It mixes the power between the two wheels and makes it go forward. Same way with back and then side to side. Now, the other way that we could actually drive this is in a skid steer. Um, and this is a mode that's uh, described where I actually, instead of forward and back, is mixed on one joystick, and then left and right is mixed on the other, so that it will turn left or right depending on whether or not I move it in that horizontal axis, and that's a skid steer. So those are the various options on how this actually would work. The only other thing we need to talk about is actually we have a servo. Uh, servos are easy to hook up with this. All I need to do is take my servo wire from my uh, servo, plug it into my wireless receiver in the channel that I want to use. Pay attention to uh, the color coding on your servo wire. I have a black, which is negative, red positive, yellow is signal. So I need to make sure that when I plug this into my receiver, black is on the outside. I'll just plug that in just like so. My servo is initialized. And again, you'll notice that I have all three wires, turn this this way, black is to the outside. And that's make sure that you have that plug in that way. And now that when I move my uh, the, the correct uh, axis on my joystick, I'm moving my servo. So that's how the, uh, easy it is to actually connect it and put this onto your robot. So uh, we hope that uh, information is helpful. We hope that inspires you to go out and do like we always say, have fun. Build some robots, come back and see us.